What's up, Gabe Rustrom Keska here, and today we're talking about the biggest PlayStation failure of all time. Like, literally, apparently, in the last 30 years that they've been making consoles and games and freaking accessories, this is the biggest flop they have ever had. And I want to talk about why, I want to talk sales numbers, and I want to just discuss this because as a person that actually has played 70 hours of Concord and had a chance to sort of interview a lot of the very tiny player base, I think there is a specific reason that this is such an abysmal, pathetic failure. But let's discuss. Hi, hope you're having a great day. And if you could, please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. So I woke up and I saw this. And to be honest, I find it to be so deeply fascinating because typically as a person that's been very closely covering the last decade of what Sony has been up to, I feel like they've been, in my opinion, very successful with the PlayStation brand. The launching of the PS4, the launching of the PS5, the fact that there was even PS5 shortages, the fact that they've actually managed to make so many games that, in my opinion, seemed sort of controversial at the time, like Killzone was great, letting Guerrilla Games make Horizon Zero Dawn, which ended up being the highest-selling PlayStation game ever, Sony has made some smart decisions with PlayStation, with its exclusives, and with its partnerships, but this is one that I think everybody is just confused by. Concord just had 54 concurrent players. Not 54,000, not 5,400, 54 concurrent players. Now... This is so bafflingly, unmeasurably bad. I mean, it's difficult to truly comprehend this, but apparently the rough numbers right now is that it probably sold about 25,000 copies worldwide for a budget of about 100 million. Now, this is a very debated digit. Some people think that it may be closer to 150 million, maybe all the way up to about 200 million of cost. And everybody's kind of saying, how... Did this specifically come to be the biggest PlayStation flop ever? I mean, compared to something like Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, like, this game sucked. I made an entire video that went super viral where I said that it's like <laughs> one of the worst games I've ever played. This game sold maybe 60 times the amount of Concord. And I'll just say it as a person that's played Concord, it's bad but it's not Suicide Squad bad. I mean, I've, I've played a lot of Concord. I've won a lot of matches. I've leveled up quite a bit. It's definitely objectively better than this, and yet it somehow made so much less. And, and consider the fact that Suicide Squad bombed so bad, WB has said that this is their biggest failure of all time. So a lot of people are discussing this because it seems like something else extra is going on. It's not just that the game is not finished or that it feels very poorly balanced and honestly not very exciting. It's not just that the art style is so bland. I think there's something extra to this that does need to be addressed. But let me actually start with those numbers. So this is sort of rough speculation, and a lot of people are kind of casting doubt on that. If you actually scroll to the replies, people are like, there is no way this game actually sold 10,000 copies. It peaked at 600 players. So the reason I believe these numbers as freaking awful as they are, even at face value, I think it comes down to almost the gym paradox in that uh, if you go to the gym, like I go to the gym every single day because I enjoy lifting weights and trying to do strength training stuff, my gym probably has a thousand members. But when you go to it, you only see like 10 dudes, 20 dudes, even at rush hour, there's like 45 people in the gym. But my point is that of those thousand people, there's only a certain amount of people that are actually going to, you know, people will pay for the subscription and not actually show up. People will buy games and never log in. So even from these rough estimates, I think this is just showing the fact that even the people that bought it are not playing it. Even if that's 25,000, I've been trying to play the game and I run into the same people over and over and over again. And I feel like that's the biggest, baddest sign is if you have an always online game that's supposed to get people to do weekly bonuses and daily quests and stuff like that, and it needs other players to exist, there is no bot system in this. 
it needs to have a very big and very active fan base. And at this point, nobody at all is playing it. But I think it's interesting that so many people even doubt this. The fact that people are saying there's no way this is real. I saw this tweet by Larry Bundy where he essentially said that it seems like maybe a lot of people never even turned it on. Like people bought it and then never even got a single kill. The first time you ever kill any player, you get the first trophy. 25% of people didn't even get that. So what's actually going on? So I think part of this comes down to the fact that this is not the worst game of all time. Uh, PlayStation's definitely done worse deals. PlayStation has licensed incredibly awful stuff, especially from Square Enix. Like, no hate towards Square Enix, but I've definitely seen Square Enix kind of just shovel stuff out. What, what was it called? Left Alive? There was a game that was released as a PlayStation exclusive. It was like a Metal Gear Solid ripoff. It was absolutely awful. Quiet Man. There have definitely been worse games that have been shoveled onto PlayStation that ended up making more money. But my counter example is Hyenas. So if you did not know about this game, last year, Sega was about to release their own hero shooter. I mean, it was like a mix of like Valorant and Counter-Strike and a bunch of games in one. But if you'll notice this, this game apparently was considered impossible to release. Like keep that in mind as we watch this game play. What you're seeing is some of the only footage that's ever been publicly released. Some people have had a chance to play it. Some YouTubers have posted their own gameplay of closed betas and alphas. But apparently, Sega did internal data that said the amount of money it would cost to keep this going, to make it fun, to keep it constantly profitable with new stuff rolling out is so expensive. And they felt the market is too saturated. There's too many games as a service projects, like not even shooters, stuff like Genshin Impact and World of Warcraft are also making billions of dollars just by being constant live service games. I think that this game would have been a bigger success than Concord, but even this would have been a flop. At least this is fun, colorful. It looks like a game that actually has a nice, smoothed freaking clip to it. My thing is this. In the past, I've said a specific quote. If there's any quote I hope lives past me, I want it to be this. Better bad than boring. Now, what I mean by that, better bad than boring is kind of my catchphrase for the fact that I think gamers just want to be entertained. And entertainment does not always necessitate perfectly balanced or being completely fluid. Sometimes jank can be entertaining. Sometimes a bad game, like everybody loves to hate on Star Wars Outlaws. I beat the heck out of that game in three 10-hour sittings, and I kind of enjoyed it. I gave it a 7 out of 10. I thought it was a pretty dang good game for what it was trying to achieve, but I almost think that the jank of it, the bad stealth, the clunky AI, to me, that's almost more entertaining than a perfectly smoothed out product sometimes. But what I mean is that Concord is a game with no rough edges. Every weapon is just as strong as every other weapon. Every skin that you can unlock is equally generic as all the rest. Every freaking character that you level up doesn't get any game-breaking abilities. There is zero incentive to test the meta because everything is so balanced, it's almost like a smooth surfaced floor. Everything is so balanced that nothing ever sticks out. The bland characters. Like, I have played 70 hours of Concord. Oh my god, god help me. Actually, it's closer to 80 hours. I think I'm at like 76 hours. But my point is the fact that in all of that time, I never found myself excited or gripping the controller or excited. Or I've never found myself to be frustrated. I think... That part of the necessity of a good game or an addictive game is elements you want to chase. That FOMO of, oh man, that guy's got a bustedly strong weapon. Now I want to play and level up and unlock that weapon. And, oh man, now they nerfed it. Now I have to experiment with other weapons to see what's equally good. My point is the fact that Concord is so bland, it's so forgettable, that nobody can even actually point and laugh at the mistakes of it. I... 100% believe, because I've had a chance to talk to them, some people bought Suicide Squad to kill the Justice League because it's broken, because it's bad, because it freaking kills Batman in the most gratuitously unflattering fashion style. My point is the fact that some people enjoy just the mindless killing. 
And this game, Concord, is not even entertaining enough to enjoy for that basic gameplay loop. Now, I have noticed that some people, some PlayStation defenders, and I'm not saying that Colin Moriarty is just like some freaking PlayStation sill, but on his PlayStation podcast, he was talking about the fact that Sony has made a series of very bad deals. Firewalk, Bungie, Neon Koi, these are things that have been purchased and then made very bad games, very big flops. So people are wondering, can Firewalk even survive? Like, selling... $100 million spent, eight years of dev time for 25,000 units sold, people are going to get fired. People are going to get gutted. It sounds like Bungie is also currently just being completely gutted like a fish. My thought is that PlayStation needs to pivot. PlayStation needs to try and do something different. But I almost think that, if anything, they can't save Concord. I've seen some people that actually play the game that I've had a chance to talk to say, I just want a bigger player base. If we had fresh people, fresh faces, fresh voices, fresh names, maybe some fresh blood would make it better. Because at this point, playing against the same 100 people over and over and over again in these six by six matches, it's boring. It's basic. And I have been playing it because I do want to try and get the platinum. I think it'd be funny to be the only person in the world with the platinum trophy for the lowest selling PlayStation game of all time. I've been playing it. Some people ask me, why the hell are you playing a game so boring? Honestly, I've been binging X-Files while I play it. So I have uh, <laughs> X-Files on this screen, which is much bigger than my teeny tiny screen where I have teeny tiny little Concord. I play it muted and just watch them solve crimes. And you go, that doesn't like a good use of time. You know, yeah, it's not a good use of time. But I think it'd be entertaining to have the only freaking platinum trophy. But at this point, it's a race where it really does come down to the fact that <laughs> I am trying to get the Platinum Trophy before the game dies. Because you can watch every match you win, you'll see one name that never, ever comes back. PlayStation, I have no idea how you possibly looked at Concord. Because there are talks that Sony apparently saw this game and went, oh, this is so promising, we need to purchase the studio. I have no idea what kind of special freaking crash bandicoot crack you guys are smoking but uh wowzers was this probably the biggest playstation l of all time and i am curious to see what happens next because they are going to make this game free to play at some point i, I mean it's just inevitable but i think even then people aren't going to play it they're not incentivized to log in i think this is just dead on arrival and nobody's going to get that plat. But what do you guys think about this? Please give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. I've actually had a bunch of people uh, kind of hassling me for playing Concord, saying, you made a video saying it sucks and you keep playing it. Honestly, I think I have a thing where when I'm playing a good game, it's great and I'll be hyper-focused on it. But I do kind of enjoy playing like absolutely awful games while watching TV. There's something zen about just watching an absolute horrible game with some really good TV, but I'm a weirdo. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.